We are chasing the dream of owning a supercar. So no turning back, straight forward. And I know it's a big ask and a mountain to climb, but we've started trading cars to try and achieve this. Being in the car industry benefits us hugely and we should be able to get a lot more deals done a lot quicker. In the first episode, we bought a Mini Cooper sat up in a garden. And after extensive work, we've provisionally sold it for £1450, which leaves us just shy of what we think we need for the next trade in the series. So instead of having to go and buy another quick car, I've went to the garage to dig out these bikes which we can sell and add to the trade since Michelle bought them during Covid and never ever used them. We're heading to the JDM Scotland Easter Cars and Coffee Meet which is only one minute's drive from where the next trade car is. But before we can do that, the Pulsar is needing a well overdue clean which we promised to do after the Aran road trip. Michelle's worked up an appetite from cleaning the car, so she's decided to turn the Subaru spoiler into a breakfast bar. I'm VIP, I'm a big deal My life a movie, I'm the one they wanna be still And I'm a queen, yeah Keep it real, yeah I keep my circle tighter than the earring piercing I look like a bag of money I'm on They wanna know what I'm on Diamonds dancing on my neck That is the vibe I'm on Boss mode in effect And my money long And they all wanna come to my yard Ice me out and leave me alone you know I be popping off, switching lanes, swiping cars. They throwing them bags at me, cause obviously I am a star. Run up a check with me, I'll make it rain, I got the funds. I got beauty and brains, I ain't no plain Jane. It's always great to meet new people at these events. And it's not just the big cars that get all the attention, the small quicker ones do as well. I also got the pleasure of chatting with Odd Boys YouTuber Jamie, who's also one half of Kamikaze Garage as well, who now own Auto Alex's cheap Honda S2000. And if you've never been to one of these GDM Scotland meets, I highly recommend it. Everyone's welcome, it's family friendly and pets are also welcome. It's a great way to get out of the house, use the cars for what we intend them to and meet some new people.
But speaking of JDM, we've got the next car in the series to go and view. Previously I mentioned about people contacting me about potential car deals etc. This is one that came to me on a voice note through WhatsApp. Hello mate, just thought I'd send you a quick voice clip because I just thought of something that popped into my head. There's a guy around the corner for me, he's got a DC2 Integra. Uh, it's a fucking belter, Integra Type R. He has been the only owner of it since it came to the UK for Japan, 2007. But it's been sawned since 2017, failed an MOT. He had it up in jack stands and it, one of the stands went right through the floor, mate. So it's in a bit of a sorry state. But I chapped the guy's door about a month ago and asked him if he'd be interested in selling it. But a lot of that damage is invisible, I couldn't see it for the outside. It's obviously quite a bit of work involved in it. So I've said no because I would never fucking clue where to start. And I'd probably end up spending 10 grand or something like that trying to fix the thing. So I don't know if it's any of your cup of tea. I thought maybe it's something, you know, if you've got money sitting there, I know you've got the wedding coming up. But Now luckily I don't have a wedding coming up. And that is a handshake that has just sealed the second car in the series. Now you will probably be able to tell that the message wasn't originally meant for me. And it was passed down through a few links in the chain. A huge thanks to Ross for agreeing to let the car come to a new home. It wouldn't have been an identity trade series without a rusty Honda Type R in it. Have you got a pedal? Uh, oh, aye, they'll pass an MLT. <laughs> I'm no stranger to a rusty Honda, and I know I have my work cut out here. But for £1,750, there's money to be made from this car, even if it needs a reshell, restored use and cut panels from another car, or even broken for parts. Although that would be an extreme case. It's time to get the car back to mine before more parts fall off and there's nothing left to bring back. And a huge thank you to Obi Dan Kenobi and his brother, who run Greer's Gears Garages, for picking up the car and bringing it back home for me. After unloading the car at mine the next day, I thought it would be a great start to try and get it running to end the episode. Do you want the battery out the Swift? Battery out the Honda would be better. Now I bought this car without knowing if the engine even runs. Ross told me it should, but it has a leak from a corroded fuel line. He also told me the last time he had it running, he switched it off because one of the pulleys had seized. He assumed it's a power steering pulley, so the belt was seized on the pulley, so we don't really want to be running that and putting any stress on the timing belt, etc. So we're just going to cut them off before we attempt to start it. Remember that time I built a garage so that I didn't have to do this anymore? <laughs> It's actually peeing out. Well, it's gone two directions. So we've jacked the car up on the one side to remove the broken fuel line. For now I'm just replacing it with a piece of rubber hose that I have, but I have ordered proper fuel line which we're going to fit in the car until we suss out what we need going forward. Here I'm just removing the power steering belt because this is the one Ross told me he believed was seized. And I'm also just going to remove the aircon pump belt at this time as well, just in case it's also seized. It's smoking, it's smoking, it's smoking, what a fire stop! Oh. 